Hello, my name is Beatriz Lopes and I'm pleased to present my project entitled Whole Genome DNA Methylation in Patients with Juvenile Myoclonic Epilepsy. The Juvenile Myoclonic Epilepsy, or GMA for short, is the most common type of genetic generalized epilepsy, affecting around 5 million people. Usually, its manifestation starts around 14 to 16 years old in patients. Although known as a genetic disorder with a strong family history, there's no common sense about which DNA variant could be used as genetic biomarker for GMA. There are some candidate genes with pointed variants, such as EFHC1, BRD2, and receptor GABR1, but most patients do not present these variants. These facts could perhaps be explained by the multifactorial character of GMA. It is known that epigenetic mechanisms can take part in various aspects of the neural function. Ever since embryogenesis and early neurogenesis, to specific gene expression and gene global silencing in tissues. Also, environmental factors can help amplify gene variants effects, thus having a potential role in epilepsy's development. For example, studies suggested that Differential methylation in some genes and at the BRD2 promoter could be associated with GME. Hence, it's reasonable to believe that epigenetic imbalances could be associated with GME predisposition. Most of these studies only evaluated the methylation pattern in regions and genes already associated with GME, making this the first study we have the knowledge to have sequenced and characterized the whole DNA methylome of patients with GME. To do it, the DNA samples were obtained from three patients and three healthy controls. The patients attended the University of Campinas Clinical Hospital, and its selection was made upon consideration of their epileptic drug use, age, and sex homogeneity, and if they had comorbidities or other neuronal disorders. After sample prepping, such as DNA purification and concentration, the samples went through bisulfite conversion and whole genome bisulfite sequencing, or WGBS for short. Using bioinformatic approaches and software, the WGBS raw data was crimped, filtered, and the reads were aligned. The methylation percentages were then calculated. As you can see in this table, we had good coverage, a high number of reads, a high unique alignment percentage, and here we are able to see that most methylation cytosines are in a CPG context, which is the context the next results are presented. Here you can have an overimpression of the genomic location of the DMRs. There were 5,337 DMRs, about 55% of them hypermethylated. They overlap more than 3,000 genes, most of them being protein-coding genes. To map these DMRs and annotate these genes, we mainly use the Ensemble and UCSC Genome Browser and the API tools through Python and R programming. Previous studies focused on regions being reached for CPG islands. Interestingly, Although methylation is known to occur mostly in these regions, we found that only a very small percentage of the DMRs are overlapping CPG islands. There are studies showing that methylation in different genomic regions can lead to different regulation effects. Most of our DMRs are in intergenic and intronic regions, which are suggested to regulate genomic stability or act as alternative promoters and enhancers, respectively. Further, between our more than 3,700 overlapping genes, we only observed 297 that was somehow already related to epilepsis. They have a diverse array of molecular functions, and their more cautious study could lead us to better understand the GMA physiopathology, as some of them are directly related to neurogenesis and nerve impulse transmissions, as the CNTN. As we can see, the WGBS allowed us to have a broad and more complete vision of the DMR location along the genome. A complete and more thorough study later can lead us to better understand how these relations of location, gene, and DMRs are regulating these genes.
and consequently may be present in GMA development, amplifying our understanding of this disturb. We are now seeking to validate our data and performing some more in-depth analysis, so we can have more assertive conclusions about the role of this patient's methylation patterns in GME physiology. In conclusion, there is a differential methylation pattern in patients with GME that differentiates them from healthy individuals. Thank you for your time, I appreciate it.